welcome everyone on the line. Uh, I'm excited to be here today. And as Jeremy said, I work for Zoetis as a technical service veterinarian. And so one of my main roles is providing educational information to horse owners, veterinarians, and professionals such as this group. So thank you for so many of you joining in on the call today. I saw that we had quite a large number of registered farriers, so excited to have this opportunity to present to you. We at Zoetis appreciate your interest in learning more about Dormosidan Gel. Our goal today is to share with you information on the product so that you will feel comfortable trying it in your practice. We believe that Dormosidan Gel is very well suited for use in horses during shoeing and trimming procedures, and we'd like to share with you how the product can help you work safer, easier, and more efficiently on horses that may be a little bit more reluctant to having hoof work performed. So this evening throughout the webinar, I will share with you the who, what, when, where, and whys of Dormosidan Gel. I'll explain how it works and explain the safety and efficacy of the product with the goal of hopefully relieving concerns that you may or may not have and hopefully excite you about trying the product if you haven't done so already. Additionally, I'll share with you how to implement it into your current routine and how the product is obtained from a veterinarian. So to give you kind of a roadmap of where we're going, uh, who can benefit from this? Clearly, uh, you, the farrier group, we hope that you'll feel that you can benefit from the product. Horse owners and veterinarians because it increases, uh, it's more convenient for them. And then ultimately our horse patients would be the recipients of the benefit. What is Dormosan gel? I'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, but briefly, it's a unique oral formulation of detovidine hydrochloride. When to use it? Potentially with fractious, nervous, or young horses. And then there's a variety of procedures where it has application uh, in addition to shoeing and farrier work. And why? Ultimately, to make your life easier and safer. Uh, additionally, horse owners like it. I'll share with you some survey information where they've shared some feedback with us about how they like the product. And then it's less stressful for the horse, and that's ultimately our goal. This slide demonstrates the important safety information. It's included with every drug by regulation of the FDA. Perhaps you can relate to this if you've seen commercials on TV where all of the potential side effects of any drug are shared with the consumer. This is required by law. All of the potential, and I do want to stress potential side effects, are listed in the ISI. Most of these are expected and known side effects of this class of drug which is in the class called alpha-2 receptor agonist. The prescribing veterinarian will be aware of these and will prescribe only to healthy horses that are expected to be able to tolerate the drug safely. So to delve a little bit deeper into what's in the important safety information, uh, Dormosidan gel is designed to be absorbed through the oral mucosal surface of the horse's mouth. It works through slow absorption. As such, gloves are recommended and provided by the company with each tube of Dormosidan gel to ensure safe administration. In the event of contact with skin or mucosal surface, the product can be easily washed off with soap and water. It has a very viscous consistency and a blue color, and these features make it easily identifiable should some of the product escape from the horse's mouth or inadvertently come in contact with other surfaces. It may be advisable to contact a veterinarian or physician should unintended exposure occur. So what is Dormosidan gel? I mentioned before it's an oral mucosal gel formulation of detomidine. It has the exact same active ingredient that is in detomidine or Dormosidan injectable, which has been safely administered to horses intravenously and intramuscularly for over 30 years. This product is unique in that it is specifically labeled for administration by horse owners and handlers. There's no other sedative product on the market that carries this type of label. Regulatory bodies felt the product was suitable and safe for horse owners and handlers to administer, thus eliminating the need for a veterinarian to be on site. 
However, of note, a veterinarian must prescribe dermosidan gel for a specific horse. Thus, there is oversight from a veterinarian who should be familiar with the horse's medical history. Thermosidan gel is the only FDA-approved product specifically labeled for this type of administration, administration by a horse owner or a handler. It's labeled to provide sedation and restraint for minor, non-painful husbandry procedures, including shoeing. So let's discuss where Dermosidan gel can help farriers performing their daily work. Because the product provides sedation and relief from anxiety, both key features of this class of drug, alpha-2 receptor agonist, it may be ideal for use on fractious or nervous horses doing, during trimming or shoeing. It's a great product which can protect you, the farrier, so that you can safely complete the job at hand. We do want to point out that if you need to work on a particularly painful horse, perhaps one that has foundered or is severely laminitic, it may be appropriate to discuss with a veterinarian an alternative sedative product, such as Dormosidan injectable. This is because Dormosidan gel is not labeled to provide analgesia or pain relief due to how it is absorbed in the body and the bioavailability of the product to the horse. However, Dormosidan injectable is labeled for analgesia. This highlights the importance of having open dialogue with the veterinarian and the horse owner about the most suitable drug for the desired procedure. So the mode of action, this indicates how Dormosidan gel works. As I've mentioned, it is in the class of drug called alpha-2 receptor agonist. Other products in this class, which you're likely familiar with, include xylazine or rompum, and of course, the tomidine injectable. This class of drug works to block receptors that release a protein called norepinephrine, which is like adrenaline. This is normally necessary for maintenance of arousal. By blocking these receptors, normosidan causes sedation and relief from anxiety, ultimately producing a reliable, safe, and dependable pharmacologic effect. A veterinarian with a relationship with the horse and the client must prescribe dormosidan gel for a particular horse's needs. And this would be based with the understanding that there's a valid client-patient veterinary relationship. Dormosidan gel is uniquely formulated as an oral mucosal drug. It is actually the only FDA-approved drug of this type and the only FDA-approved oral product for administration by horse owners and handlers. Because this is a unique route of administration, there are instructions which are included with every syringe for proper administration. Here is a picture which is taken directly from the product insert to demonstrate exactly how to deliver Dormosidan gel under the tongue for sublingual absorption. It's actually quite easy to slip the small syringe through the lips at the commissure of the mouth and deposit the drug under the tongue. There is no need to grasp the the tongue in order to administer the product. Horses actually accept it quite readily. In one study, it was accepted without objection by 97% of the horses. Here is a picture of the syringe. The Dormorsidan gel syringe has a ring stop with dosing information based on weight clearly indicated at each click. This should ensure proper dosing by weight. It's important to note that while the syringe looks very much like a deworming paste syringe, Dormosidan gel must be administered under the tongue at the interdental space to ensure proper absorption and desired results. If it is inadvertently administered like a dewormer on top of the tongue and the horse swallows the product, it will be virtually ineffective. This is because once it passes into the stomach, it is not absorbed through the mucosa and the drug does not reach the appropriate receptors for blocking. Some additional tips for ensuring success with Dormosidan gel include ensuring that the horse's mouth is free of feed material. This is to help ensure that the horse doesn't actually swallow after you administer the drug for the reasons that I just explained as well as if the horse 
as feed material in his mouth. If you administer the drug, the drug may stick to the feed material and he may end up spitting it out. Secondly, making sure the product is deposited under the tongue for sublingual absorption is very key, as I've just uh, explained. Once the product has been dosed, for safety reasons, the cap should be replaced and the product put back into the box and properly discarded by the gloved individual. Any unused drug should be saved for future use. Should not be saved for future use, excuse me. Additionally, once dermosidan gel is administered, the horse should be kept in a quiet place. As with any sedative drug, if the horse is continually stimulated or kept in an aroused state while the drug is being absorbed, it may be impossible to overcome this heightened stimulation. And finally, it's very important to wait and to advise the client to wait at least 40 minutes. I actually sometimes just tell owners to wait an hour. The drug will last up to three to four hours, so you have plenty of time to work on the sedate horse, so there's really no need to rush. Give the horse plenty of time for the sedative effect to take hold, and then you'll have a better shot of having increased success. Food and water should be removed once storm gel is administered to minimize the chance of the horse inadvertently swallowing the product and loss of efficacy. So after waiting 40 minutes, you and the horse owner should expect to see signs of a sedated horse. Well, I'm sure most of you are familiar with how a sedated horse appears. I wanted to highlight what to expect. Horses may have a dropped head. Potentially some mild sweating can occur. This is an expected side effect of this class of drug. And since the horse will experience muscle relaxation and calming, our ultimate goal, he may actually take a wide base stance to help himself steady on his feet. However, horses are capable of standing on three legs under Dormosidan gel influence, and failure to have used the product successfully have reported that they're able to work on horses and not have them lean or fall on them. Once the procedure is complete, as with any horse recovering from sedation, it's important to remove the food and water, as I've mentioned, until all signs of sedation have subsided typically about three to four hours after administration. So regarding this 40-minute waiting period, I realize time is money for all of us, so waiting this amount of time is not necessarily desirable for you, the farrier. I recommend having conversations with horse owners or veterinarians ahead of a scheduled appointment for a potentially fractious or nervous horse, suggesting to the horse owner to obtain Dormosidan gel. Then the horse owner or handler could potentially administer dorm gel, say an hour before your scheduled arrival. Or alternatively, if you're doing a barn with multiple horses, you could start with the horse that do not need sedation while dormosidan gel is taking effect and then work on that horse towards the end of the appointment time. We wanted to share with you other places where Dormosidan gel is used for routine husbandry procedures by horse owners. These types of scenarios were evaluated in our safety and efficacy studies. Additionally, horse, since the product has come to market, horse owners have shared with us that these are the kinds of procedures where they have felt the product was helpful in allowing them to accomplish the task safely and with less stress. So you can see the list here on the screen. Uh, bandage changes, trimming, sheath cleaning, barrier work, potentially horses that need to have blood drawn or vaccinated but are quite averse to needles could be pre-treated with Dormosidan gel. Horse owners are loving the product as it allows greater flexibility and less dependence on scheduling with their veterinarian for a time to visit. Later I'll share with you some information from a horse owner survey indicating their satisfaction with the product for these other types of procedures as well. So how can dromosidid gel make your life easier? First, there's no need for injectable drugs requiring needles, which may lead to increased risk of injury to humans and increased risk of potentially improper administration and does hold the opportunity for more severe side effects uh, if the intravenous route was uh, done incorrectly. Secondly, dermosidan gel is easy to administer. 
In fact, in our efficacy studies, it was shown to be 97% accept, accepted with mild to no resistance. These were client-owned horses that all had history of being difficult to perform hus husbandry procedures on. Third, since the result is a relaxed, calm horse, you'll be able to do your job safer with little or no fight. This makes for a happier horse, a happier client, and a happier farrier. Farriers who have used the product have given us some positive feedback regarding their experiences. It makes it easier for the owner and handler as there are no needles involved, thus safer for administration. It eliminates the need for the veterinarian to be present at time of shoeing and thus trying to coordinate schedules. And this is all good news for you to help you work safer, save time, and increase revenue. So how do you work Dormosidan gel into your routine? Well, we've touched on this a little bit, but again, I want to emphasize encouraging you to have discussions ahead of time with your horse owners and veterinarians about Dormosidan gel when you anticipate working on a difficult horse. We encourage you to have open dialogue with all parties. Potentially suggest to the horse owner contacting the vet veterinarian, requesting a prescription for Dormosidan gel for a specific horse. Good planning will allow the product to work easily into your busy day. As I mentioned, it can be administered prior to your arrival uh, by the horse owner or trainer, or it can be administered for a horse that's going to be um, worked on later in the day. The great thing about Dormosin and Gel is that it eliminates the need to coordinate schedules with the veterinarian to administer an injectable drug, and this can save you valuable time. Dormosin and Gel also reduces the need for other types of manual restraint, which handlers may be uncomfortable or simply unskilled at using, such as a twitch. To obtain Dormosin and Gel, the product must be labeled for a specific course and prescribed by a veterinarian. The product should be properly labeled with all pertinent information about the owner and the horse. This ensures that Dormosidan gel is prescribed for a healthy horse by a veterinarian who is fully aware of the horse's health status and the appropriate dose necessary for that horse. Good communication between all parties can ensure a stress-free chewing experience for you, the horse, and the handler. Now I'd like to share with you some feedback we obtained from horse owners who have used Dormosidan gel. The design of this survey was as follows. Dormosidan gel samples were provided to veterinarians who were identified as not using much Dormosidan gel in their practice. The veterinarians were sampled the product and then they sampled it to appropriate clients both parties were asked to complete an online survey of their experiences. Respondents had an opportunity to enter into a drawing to win an iPad, but were not paid. There were 112 respondents, 90 of which were horse owners, and 22 of which were veterinarians. I'm going to share with you the horse owner responses. So the demographics of the horse owners were 89% women, 11% men with the average age of the respondents being 44 years. Interestingly, this is the demographic of the most growing section of horse owners in the industry right now. It's pretty reflective of that population. And there was an equal split between horse owners, primary focus of either pleasure or performance horses. This graph indicates whether horse owners would consider using Dormosidan gel for the following procedures after having tried the product. You'll see the top two procedures were sheath cleaning and farrier work. Very few, 3%, found no procedures they would actually consider using Dormosidan gel for in the future. This should give you some confidence that horse owners are already thinking about using it for shoeing and trimming nervous or fractious horses. 89% of these horse owners that tried Dormosidan gel said it made it easier for them to complete the desired procedure. These are some comments that were taken directly from the free response section of the survey. So it indicated that they felt the product allowed the procedure to be safer, horses were a lot more calm and easier to handle, 
and they were able to get the job done without anyone getting hurt, all really important things. Another benefit is no need to call the veterinarian, so there was increased convenience and no shock. Another individual loved the product and was interested in definitely using it again. One person responded that it was a lifesaver when it came to shoeing and veterinary procedures. It calmed the horse without sedating too heavily, and the horse was able to recover without any problems. And then another individual pointed out that it would be useful for first trims uh, on babies. Here this slide indicates that 93% of the participants intend to use Dermosan gel within the next year. And this slide simply depicts, again, from the free response section, what are the most common words that people indicated. The larger the word, the more frequently it was indicated. So words like great, recommend, loved it, dormosedan was easy, sedation was achieved. Uh, you can see from there all of the different types of things. They used it for the vet, uh, barriers, painful things. And then finally, I just wanted to share with you all an exciting new app that the company Zoetis has just recently launched. This is an app for the iPad or the iPhone, and it allows horse owners and trainers to import put horses' information, including health and chewing records. So it, it helps uh, owners organize scheduling, and it gives them timely reminders for keeping their horses on schedule particularly for farrier procedures and horse health procedures. And you can see here it also allows them to do some pretty exciting things like track their ride and share that with friends on Facebook, keep a calendar of important appointments and events, competitions, and then get timely updates about important health information as relates to their horses like vaccination, dentistry information. And then they also have a link to all of their horses' health records. So the part that really may apply to you all is this section where they can enter their horse's information and then enter their veterinarian's information, their farrier, emergency contact information. And then you see on the right of the slide here where they have the date in which their horse was last shot or trimmed and the next appointment time and a timely alert. So the advantage of this is if your information is entered in there, it increases their commitment and loyalty to you, help it maintain business with you, as well as the ability to keep them on track with their scheduled appointments, hopefully uh, keeping the horses regularly trimmed is beneficial for you and beneficial for the horse. So kind of a neat app we just wanted to make you aware of. Um, and that was put together by, this is a picture of our entire equine team consisting of our sales force and veterinarians and marketing group that have brought you this presentation as well as that app. With that, we're going to open it up to some questions. I hope that this information was helpful and gave you some background and some comfort level in potentially trying the product. If you need to or are interested in some more information, you can go to this website at dormosedangel.com and get more information there. And we'll open the floor for questions. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dr. Boggs. Uh, she mentioned uh, we're going to have a Q&A now. Um, at the end, you mentioned the survey and how horse owners responded. Uh, how have you found that veterinarians have responded to uh, Dormosedan gel? Great question. And I just uh, left that off in the interest of time, but their responses were almost identical to the horse owners. 91% of uh, the individual said that all of their clients were not aware of Dormosedan gel, so that it's good to kind of uh, get information out to let more individuals know. But after trying it, 100% said they would continue to prescribe it to horse owners for a variety of husbandry procedures, including barrier procedures. One of the other feedback things that we got from uh, veterinarians was that they liked the clarity of the user information. And I spent a bit of time on that because this is a very different, unique product and how it's administered is very different. So really kind of important to have clarity around educating the horse owner or handler how to administer it. Okay, um, here's another question. What if an owner, child, or companion animal comes in contact with the product uh, what what do you know that's been reported relating to the gel contact or ingestion by a non-horse species? 
Great question. Um, certainly with any drug, there's, you know, always uh, safety first. We want to make sure that it's administered to the uh, species of interest and that other non-horse non species don't come in contact with it. Uh, pharmacovigilance data uh, is where we reports of adverse events or exposure by other species is reported to the company, and we keep track of that very closely. That's really important to know what's going on. And, Luckily, for over three years the product's been on the market, there have only been eight pharmacovigilance reports. And what is what does that break down like? Well, there were four adults that were exposed, one child, two dogs, and there was a show steer that was exposed, although he was intentionally given the product. And the experiences of those individuals with some, some minor sedative effects but all resolved uh, satisfactorily. All cases were uh, resolved with, with no other than some, some mild sedative effects. And so, um, you know, it really is important to consider how the product's handled. And that's why I spent a little bit of time talking about um, the color of the product and knowing if you come in contact with it that you that it does have slow absorption and that you should, uh, you know, attend to washing it with soap and water, you know, pretty quickly. Okay. And I'll combine a few uh, questions here that kind of expand on that question. Um, and this is uh, prior to that 40 minutes or at that 40 minutes mark. Any time before then, if the horse drools, if it sneezes uh, or licks you, um, you know, is there a concern there about absorption of that, the residual gel? Sure. So uh, the label provides proper safety information to follow, and so we really encourage you to read that closely. Uh, if Dormosidan gel comes in direct contact with skin, eyes, or mouth, it can cause some irritation. However, it, it is slowly absorbed. As we said, it takes 40 minutes to take effect. Uh, again, it has this blue color, and it's very viscous. So if you notice it on your hand or your face or somewhere, wash it off with soap and water. And as long as you're pretty judicious about that, you know, there's, there's minimal risk of, of having effects. But if you get it into your eyes, certainly flush it with water for 15 minutes. Uh, if you get it in your mouth, we recommend that you rinse your mouth very judiciously and, but, and then don't swallow. Um, and then in any cases of accidental exposure or ingestion, you should seek medical attention. You should take the package insert uh, to your physician, let them know what class of drug it is, they'll, they'll understand that what alpha-2 receptor agonists are, and then follow their guidance going forward. Um, the additional thing that we would request is that um, any adverse event or human or non-horse exposure be reported to the company. So we have a division called the Veterinary Medical Information Product Support Group, and they uh, receive all kinds of calls. They receive calls if you have questions, but they also receive calls if there are adverse events or, or exposure like that. And then we're very judicious about reporting this to the appropriate medical and regulatory agencies. We need to keep track of that. Okay. Uh, does uh, we'll go kind of switch gears with a different type of question about the uh, product. Does it require refrigeration? Good question. No, it does not require refrigeration. But I would not advise that it sits out in in the heat or or is taken out of the package. It is does come in a package that I would recommend you store it in there. But as long as you keep it at um, you know room temperature, that's fine. Yeah, what would you, to maybe to expand on that, what do you see the, uh, or what is the shelf life of the product while it's in the box? Oh, I think the shelf life is six months to a year. Um, it will have an expiration date on it, um, but I think it's, it might be closer to a year. Maybe okay. uh, one of our marketing people could, could write in that answer as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I, I'm noticing a lot of questions specific toward uh, various breeds. Um, so maybe uh, to review, um, when when you're talking about a a typical dosage, you know what what's the size of the of the horse that that maybe you're referring to in terms of that 40 minutes to four hour range? Okay, so the dose is 40 micrograms per kilogram, and 
the dosing syringe, this is why it's really important to work with a veterinarian. The veterinarian will have an idea of the weight of the horse, and they should recommend what the dose should be, and that should be something that they put on the label. So the label should have the horse's name, the practice name, the horse owner's name, and what the dose is. Just like if you were to obtain a bottle of antibiotics from the pharmacist, it would tell you what, what the appropriate dose is. There is, on the dial, indicated weight increments to give you some idea. But again, I would work with a veterinarian. The, the product can be administered up to a 1,300-pound horse. So one of the things that's sort of a, uh, a safety factor is that you, the dose of an entire syringe is about the dose for an average horse that's out there. I mean, most of the average adult horses are 1,000 to 1,200, 1,300 pounds. So most horses are going to take a whole syringe. Now, you know, you're going to sometimes have lighter horses, Arabians that are a bit lighter, or you might have um, a younger horse, a yearling, or something like that that's not going to weigh as much. So it, it can be titrated down for that particular horse. Okay. And uh, to go back to the question about shelf life, it, the shelf life is two years after manufacture date. Okay. Here's a question I've been waiting on, and that's uh, here's somebody who's their practice. Uh, hold on just a minute, Jeremy. So that sure. you were answering the, that question. Yeah. So you were saying it's two years. Two years after, after the, manufacture the manufacture date. Yes. Okay. Great. Just want to make sure everybody understood that. Absolutely. And, uh, we're gonna, this is the one I was excited about, is the non-equine clients. Uh, this guy in his practice trims a few oxen. Uh, can you use it with his, bo or can he use it with his bovine clients? So the product is labeled for use in horses. Um, that has to be my recommendation. Now there are many products that are labeled for one species and are used on an extra label basis for other species. And I do know of many instances in which it's being used in other species. Uh, it has been used in some cattle. I mentioned the show steer that it was used in. Uh, it has been used in pot-bellied pigs. And it's actually even been used in small animals. So while we worry about the small, the dog or the small animal getting exposed to it, I know that at some universities they're using it as almost a pre-medication for small animals. You just have to be very careful of your dosing. And the, and the problem is from a company perspective, we know how to dose for a horse based on the safety and efficacy studies that have been done prior to the product being launched and marketed and getting FDA approval. So. We can't really say how do you dose for, you know, a cow because we don't have that data to support that. Okay. Uh, can you tell us what the average cost would be maybe for one package? Well, there's a little bit of variability depending on, um, you know, obviously what the veterinarian uh, prices it at, but it, they're running uh, about uh, $20 to $30 a syringe. Okay. Uh, can this? Yeah, I'm sorry. There's some variability, and I can't really, you know, tell tell you exactly what it would be priced at because I would be price fixing. <laughs> sure. Uh, can this product be used for teeth floating? Uh, so, in the safety and efficacy studies, the FDA did actually request that we demonstrate the use of the product with power floating. However. It is not recommended by the company for it to be used for floating. You know, mainly one of the concerns while we say that the product is going to be absorbed and if you don't enter the horse's mouth for 40 minutes to an hour, you know, the product should be absorbed and gone. But, um, you know, you are, you are then potentially putting your hands in and interacting more with the saliva and things like that. And... So we don't have data to say, well, how long does it hang out in the mouth, and when is it truly safe to be working in the mouth? Um, and the other thing is, if you're if you're using it for power floating, you know that's off, uh, quite a a noisy, vibrating experience. They may not be as sedate as you want them to be with that. So 
there there is data that it has been used for that, but it isn't something that the company routinely recommends its use for. Okay. Uh, are there any noted problems about giving dormosidan gel to pregnant mares? That's a good question. Um, I'm trying to remember if we have data on use in pregnant mares. I don't think that we have data yet on use in pregnant mares. Um, it is, let me see, I'm just looking to see. Um, yeah, it has not been evaluated for use in breeding horses, pregnant or lactating mares. Um, so, Again, things are used in species that, you know, and in different age groups that haven't been evaluated, but the company has not evaluated them in those uh, breeding animals yet. Okay. Here's a question from a young farrier who has less than one, one year experience in his own practice. And he's curious, he, he seems to have a lot of, uh, I guess what we would say, uncooperative horses in his practice. Uh, you know, what, what advice could you give him about maybe managing this conversation with the owner or helping to introduce the, uh, the veterinarian into the equation? Do you have any thought, thoughts on that? So, so the question is how to begin having the conversation? Yeah, well, the let's, yeah, or maybe how do you okay. get the veterinarian involved? might be a, a better way to look at it. Right. Um, I'm, I'm right. supposing maybe the problem here is that uh, there might be some training issues with the horses and the owners, uh, that there's a lack of training. And, and so maybe maybe it's a need to get the veterinarian involved, uh, certainly as an education point of view, and certainly to give, uh, give the prescription. Right. So this is where we really encourage you to, uh, you know, create an open dialogue with veterinarians. Veterinarians are being exposed to the same information that you all are in terms of the product, where it can be placed, how it can be used. And so hopefully they're already thinking about having conversations with barriers. Uh, potentially, you know, if you get to know the veterinarians in your area, you know, stop by their clinic or uh, they're in the barn at the same time you're in the barn, maybe just start to, to build relationships with those veterinarians, maybe not even about a specific course or a case, but begin to build relationships in terms of, you know, a collegial, professionals both working in the same industry and then if you um, you know you have a particular case I guess I would first if you don't know the veterinarian that's involved with the horse begin to have the conversation with the horse owner and say you know hey we have this animal that seems particularly stressed by this situation or you know whatever I'm aware of a product that may make it a less stressful situation for the horse and for you I'd like to and have your veterinarian be involved in this conversation and ask them, you know, whether they would be okay with you approaching the veterinarian or having a three-way conversation or or ask them who the veterinarian is. I think that's the first place to start. And or you can just share the information with the horse owner if they're not aware about that, uh, aware about the product. And then the horse owner can have the conversation with their veterinarian and say, hey, you know, I've got this horse that's a little bit stressed doesn't do well with shoeing. My, my farrier mentioned it. Would it be something you would you would help me, you know, be able to obtain? And so I think, you know, those are ways that, you know, certainly the more we can have collegial relationships between veterinarians and farriers, that's always a good thing for all parties involved. Um, and, and then maybe if you're just really new into the industry and you don't know that many veterinarians, start maybe going to some of the you know, horse owner education meetings or veterinary education meetings where you might be able to interact with them and, and get to know some people. So those would be some tips. Now, um, you know, one concern that we, we certainly hear from farriers is that, um, you know, this isn't this isn't a replacement for training, good training, and, um, you know, ultimately that's the goal. But um, certainly it's a product that will help improve creating a safe working environment for you, the farrier, and the horse owner in the meantime and, and until a horse is able to, you know, or a horse owner is able to work on some training. You know, maybe it's a sort of a stepping stone 
getting a horse over some hurdles. Um, but certainly we don't recommend that it replaces good, good husbandry and good training. But we realize the demographics of the people owning horses now have substantially changed from the last 10, 20, 30 years where people came from uh, agricultural backgrounds and now people are that women in their, their middle age and maybe they don't have a background with as much husbandry skills and they're not as comfortable using a twitch or they're not as comfortable uh, training their horse. And, and so this is one tool that can that can hopefully help help keep you safe in some of those situations. Okay, everyone. Uh, we got a we got a few more questions. We'll go through. Um, do you recommend that a veterinarian be present for the first administration with a horse? It, it's not necessary. Um, you know, it, it certainly if it, it increases the comfort level of. The, the farrier or the horse owner, that's fine. It's not necessary, though. The product is is designed and uh, labeled and FDA supported for the horse owner or handler to administer to the horse. Um, you know, certainly the the ultimate goal is that the the veterinarian has a relationship with that horse owner and the horse knows what kind of horse he's prescribing the drug for he or she. You know, it, it may not. The, no, no, no drug is perfect for every horse, so hopefully he's picking, um, you know, an appropriate horse that should, should is healthy, doesn't have liver problems or any other problems that would potentially set him up to, um, you know, not be a good candidate for the drug. It would be a little bit of onus on the veterinarian to educate the horse owner or handler on how to properly administer the drug and these types of things that I've shared with you this evening. Um, you know, again, we're sharing with veterinarians, and hopefully that information is trickling down to the person actually administering the drug. Um, doesn't always happen that way, but, um, you know, there's, I guess, I, I can't say a hard and fast yes or no. It shouldn't be necessary. It's not required as far as, you know, uh, the FDA, but if, if the horse owner and the veterinarian aren't comfortable knowing how the horse might respond to sedation, then, then maybe that would be appropriate for the first time. Okay. Uh, you know, you talked a little bit about the dosage before. We got a, a few people here asking questions about the big boys. Um, let's take a look at draft horses and, and maybe, um, I suppose, with the weight range that you mentioned, do you double the dose or, or maybe what's a little more insight on when we, we're talking about the very big horses? So, right. So draft horses are a bit of a challenge. Uh, one, they weigh more, so they often need more drug. However, many draft breeds actually are more sensitive to sedation than some of the uh, thoroughbreds and other breeds. So often, proportionally, they may not need as much by weight. So if you have a 2,000-pound horse versus a 1,000-pound horse, but you have a thoroughbred that's 1,000 pounds and a draft horse that's 2,000 pounds, the 2,000 pound horse may not actually need twice the amount of drug. And, um, you know, I, this is really where the veterinarian needs to be in the center of the conversation because that veterinarian will understand about the difference in breeds and hopefully knows that horse well enough to know that potentially he sedated the horse in the past with xylosine injectable or dermosidan injectable and knows, hey, this guy's a lightweight and needs half the amount. A normal horse would. So um, I, I can't can't give medical advice about a horse that I don't know about, but those would be some key points. And it, and it may very well be that uh, you need a tube and a half for a big guy. You know, it, you may need more than one tube of, of dorm gel for a draft horse. But with that caveat, then many of the draft breeds are a little bit more sensitive to sedation than uh, the thoroughbred or Arabian breeds. And so they don't always um, need quite as much by, on a per weight basis. So I defer to the veterinarian to be in the center of that conversation. Okay. Okay, we got our uh, final question here. And uh, for shoeing an equine athlete before a competition that has drug testing, how long will it test in the system? You know, that's going to be, uh, I would check with the whatever agencies that are testing, you know, whether it's an FEI level horse or um, whether they're going to, uh, you know, an AQHA event or a, um, and, and check whether it's a racing 
because they all have different withdrawal times uh, as far as, you know, when sedative drugs need to be withdrawn. So, um, and that, that, again, should kind of be more uh, onus on the veterinarian to uh, potentially be aware of if it's a performance horse and what type of competition they're going to, how far out the, the withdrawal time is. But sometimes it's as little as 24 hours. 